Our last topic of the semester is, ironically, insanity. We'll try to keep it real. The insanity defense gets way more attention than it deserves. Insanity pleas are few and far between, and acquittals on grounds of insanity rarer still. Contrast insanity with intoxication. As many as a third of all criminal charges involve an intoxicated defendant or victim. Even so, insanity is the topic that holds the public in thrall. I suspect this is because the insanity defense typically makes the news in homicide cases, and those are sometimes sensational cases of serial homicide. The insanity defense could be mounted to defend against any defined offense. Shoplifters who suffer kleptomania might try to raise it. But unless the shoplifter is already a celebrity, the public is unlikely to notice or care. The best known case of a successful insanity defense is still McNaughton's case. Daniel McNaughton, pictured here, killed Edward Drummond, secretary to Robert Peel, the Prime Minister of Great Britain. He was tried for murder, but acquitted on the ground of insanity. His acquittal was a sensation in the popular press. The Queen herself was not amused. Victoria had already been the target of several assassination attempts. The Crown weighed even more heavily on her head, knowing that potential assassins might be emboldened by the hope of escaping punishment for killing her on grounds of insanity. McNaughton's rule is the source of the notorious and poorly understood McNaughton rule. To establish a defense on the ground of insanity, it must be clearly proof that the party accused was laboring under such a defect of reason from disease of the mind as not to know the nature and quality of the act he was doing. We pause at this point to note the following. The relevant time is the time of the offense, not the time of trial. And the defense is based on a certain cognitive de deficit the defendant not knowing what he was doing, or if he did know it, that he did not know he was doing what was wrong. The defendant must show that his incapacity flowed from some disease of the mind. The reason for the defense is easy to understand, whether we take a utilitarian perspective or a retributivist perspective on the justification of punishment. The court in the case of Rex versus Porter expressed the utilitarian concern. What is the utility of punishing people if they be beyond the control of law by reasons of mental health? The retributivist concern arises from the fact that an actor cannot be blamed for what she cannot control. The insane person is not herself, and punishing her would not only be pointless, but wrong. The question becomes how to single out the defendants who should be punished from those who should instead be treated medically. The Porter Court observes, In considering that, it will not perhaps, if you have ever reflected on the matter, have escaped your attention that a great number of people who come into criminal court are abnormal. They would not be here if they were the normal type of average, everyday people. Many of them are very peculiar in their dispositions and peculiarly tempered. So the evidence of a disease of the mind cannot consist solely in the fact that the defendant has been charged with a crime. As the Model Penal Code puts it, the terms mental disease or defect do not include an abnormality manifested only by repeated criminal or otherwise antisocial behavior. Is recidivism, a history of repeated incorrigible offending, a defense? The Model Penal Code answers no. The affirmative defense of insanity must be established by expert medical testimony. Moreover, 
every man is presumed to be sane until the contrary be proved. Unlike other elements of the criminal offense, the defendant bears the burden of persuading the fact finder. How great that burden is varies across jurisdictions. Where federal crimes are concerned, the defendant must meet the standard of clear and convincing evidence. Some states set the defendant's burden even higher. The concern is to make life difficult for the crazy like a fox defendant who would mount a spurious insanity defense. 